A smooth stroke with a good follow through is a major weapon in our pool game. However, they don't hand it out for free on the corner of the street, so we have to do some work for it. In this first video about the stroke, I'm gonna cover four different speeds and follow throughs that we need for our pool game. So if you wanna build that stroke that you always wanted, stay tuned. Hi pool players, it's the Terminator. Welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, please hit that subscribe button, click to like these videos so you won't miss any future lessons. Let's jump onto the table now and build your stroke. Who decides when a stroke is good or when a stroke is bad? There's so many different kind of strokes on the planet. You have the Filipinos, the Europeans, the Taiwanese players, all have different concepts of their stroke. So in my opinion, a stroke is good when you can follow through and get the action in the cue ball that you need with accuracy. Point number one is the pre-strokes. Pre-strokes is what we need to feel the shot. We've done our visualization of what we need to do with the cue ball. And now the pre-strokes of the shot they give us a feel of the speed that we need. Some players like to do it this way. The Filipinos might have a more fluid way. I have a little more short version of pre-strokes like this. Either way you do it, you want to feel the shot. And this brings us to point number two. Point number two is a final moment of pause before we pull the trigger. This is, in my opinion, what separates a lot of amateurs from professionals or really good players, is a lot of amateurs might get down pre-stroke and they pull the trigger without giving themselves that final moment of peace to let their brain really work the shot into their system and then pull the trigger. You see a lot of professionals getting down on the shot. They do their pre-stroke routine and then there's always a final second or two when their cue tip is at the cue ball and they use their eye-hand coordination to feel the shot extra and get mentally ready to pull the trigger. So that's an important point to incorporate into your game. I highly suggest you start working with this. Take that moment of stillness before you pull the trigger. That's going to make a massive difference in how you execute your shots. Also, another big point that can take away a lot of frustration, confusion, and free up your mind in your game, the pause on the backswing. Do we have to do it or not? I believe it doesn't matter. It's not necessary. I do it. I've trained myself over the years to do it. There's a lot of players that used it over the years. Buddy Hall, Earl Strickland. But if you look at the Filipino players, for example, they usually have their paws here at the front of the cue ball and then they move it back in a smooth fashion as such. There's no right or wrong if you ask me. If you like to train that paws in the back like this, Go for it, work on it. If you say I want to do a more fluid action and I want to just have my paws in the front, like here, and then pull it back, fine with me too. It's personal preference. I actually use both in my game. I'm not fully aware of it. On more powerful and accurate shots, I use the paws a lot. But on certain shots where I have to be a little bit more snappy and quicker in my delivery, I don't use the paws. So try to experiment with it yourself. There is no right or wrong. So I have four examples of stroke length and follow through, and this is example number one. For me, these two go hand in hand, length and follow through, because the speed that a shot needs determines the length, how far I have to pull it back, and potentially how much I have to follow through. Now let's look at golf, for example. They also use, in their swing, they use certain different strokes. If they have to putt the ball, it's a very small movement. 
but if they have to drive the shot, it's full body movement, everything is working together, it's a totally different stroke. And in pool, I believe, we kind of have the same thing. I figured this out over the years, it kind of really resembles golf in that sense. If we have to shoot the ball medium distance, I'm not going to follow through all the way. It's only going to be in the way for me. I have to do shorten it a little bit, make it a little more stable, and I'm going to show you these steps one by one. We're going to start with the first one, which is a really soft, delicate hit, a soft, pinchy kind of a shot. We're playing 10 ball here, for example, and I want to play a really nice safety behind this 10 on the one ball. Again, I don't need a full stroke. This is the finest of finest touches. And I just want to pinch, draw this two rails behind the 10. I'm going to shorten up my bridge a little bit to get more control. And as you can see here on the camera, I'm going to just pull it back much shorter than you would think. It's just this. And I'm not falling through all the way. This is for later. I'm using a nice, small, pinchy stroke, kind of nothing but wrist, to get the action that I need. So for me, that is the first speed and stroke length that we can show. Here's another little example of the same kind of stroke. As you can see, again, all we have to do is stop the cue ball behind the seven. We don't need a lot of speed, just a small stop shot. As you see, again, I'm coming closer to the cue ball, just a small, Pull back of the cue, slight follow through. I'm even gripping the cue a little bit more forward so I can do that. Nothing special, but a nice example to show you that we don't always need that full stroke and backswing and everything. First example. Here's example number two. This time we have a little more distance between the cue ball and the object ball, but still we don't have to do a lot of work. We just want to roll this ball in with a tip of outside English. And again, for this stroke, I'm not yet going to pull the cue all the way back because I don't need that kind of speed yet. It's only going to be in the way for me personally. So I get down on this shot. I just need a small stroke again, a little bigger than the previous one. See, I'm not as close to the cue ball now. This is a normal bridge, but as you can see, how I pull the cue back, it would be up to here. That's half the distance then to my thumb because I don't need that full stroke and I'm not going to follow through all the way yet. I'm following through the ball, but I'm not doing this yet. That's for later. I'm just bringing it about to the ribs, I would say. That's like a classic stroke. The hand, bringing the hand to the ribs and stopping it there. That's kind of from snooker also. And that's a good basis for these kind of shots. Let me demonstrate. I'm getting down. I don't need much. Half a pullback and just following through to the ribs. This is our third example and the speed is starting to increase a little bit. Still a medium stroke, not too hard, but I need to go two rails on this two ball to the three. I have to use a couple of cushions and here if I would just open it up a little bit, I'm coming too short. I'm not going to be able to execute the shot properly. So this is where my brain tells me we have to start opening up. And what do I mean by that? Opening up means bringing the cue tip all the way back to the start of our bridge hand. This could be the thumb. It could be your fingers. If I would be on the table here, it would be the thumb. I'm bringing it all the way back. And this is, I think, where a lot of amateur players can have a lot of success if they start implementing this in their game. Pull the cue all the way back, guys. It's like a bow and an arrow. You don't see them do this. They're going all the way back. Baseball, it's the same thing. You're never going to hit a home run by doing this. You've got to get all the way back and follow all the way through. Golf, same thing. You want to bring that big swing? you got to come back and then execute. So we're gonna go into higher speeds now. This is a medium stroke, and you can see in this example from here, I am bringing the cue all the way back, but I'm not following through to the maximum yet. 
See, my cue is still, my follow through is still about to my ribs. I get a good smooth follow through and the speed that I need. If I bring my upper arm into this medium shot, for me it's only going to be in the way and it might actually cause me to miss the ball. So we're going to wait for that till example number four. Okay, in this fourth example, things are going to change a little bit because now we're going to come to a speed where we have to start hitting the ball firmer and something will change in our stroke. I'm playing the three ball in a game of ten ball. I have to go all the way around the table back to the four and my medium stroke bringing the cue and my hand to my ribs is not going to get there anymore. Pool balls are heavier than snooker balls and I believe this is where the change comes and the difference between the two games. We have to throw our upper arm into the equation. We need more length and follow through for these shots. We have to open up all the way to our fingers and fully extend. So the arm actually comes further than the ribs. How do we do that guys? We have to bend our wrist slightly because if we don't the cue will go straight up in the air. The cue has to stay straight, so we have to bend the wrist slightly and then extend our upper arm into the shot, like this. We can even practice this without a cue. I'm going to stand on this side so you got a clear picture of it. We can do this at home on the kitchen table. Just stand there with the bridge and you can look backwards so you can see if it's straight. We can just do this, this would be to the ribs, and then we can do this. And the wrist has to bend slightly, otherwise you get this. That's no good. We've got to bend that wrist slightly, so we can do this. As such, we can do that a hundred in a row, just to get that mechanical feeling. You don't need a cue for this. See what I'm doing? Train that. So back to the shot, we have to pull the cue all the way back and use that follow through that we just practiced and it's going to look something like this. All the way back and all the way through. Do you see the extension in my cue and my arm? That's what we need for these kind of shots. Here's another example, again we're playing 10 ball, I have to pocket the one there and go one, two, three and potentially four reels all the way around for the two ball. If I just use a medium stroke, I'm not going to get there guys. I got to bring it, extend that upper arm, bring everything I have. Let me demonstrate. Lining up, three strokes, that pause, all the way back, and all the way through. See the extension in my cue there? And I'm on the two ball. One more final example of a full stroke. We're playing 10 ball again. I have to come from the two ball, one, two, potentially three rails all the way back to the three ball. I need to bring that full stroke and extension, guys. Otherwise, I can't get there. Let me demonstrate. Full extension. Let's get the cue out of the way. Full follow through, and I just have enough angle to get from the three to the four. So there you have it, pool players, a clear insight into four different kind of strokes that you can use for your pool game and what that looks like. Stay tuned for the next episode in this stroke series where we're going to be looking at the accuracy of your stroke and we're going to walk you through a couple of nice drills. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out all the other great content on this channel. There's a ton of information out here ready to boost your game and make you a better player. And remember, if you're interested in the mental side of the game, head over to terminatorcollege.com and check out all the great courses that are waiting there for you. Thanks for watching.